So this is pretty wild. I'm like in industrial Dallas, trying to pick up my chromoly for the cage. And this place is like a fortress, man. It's like all razor wire. I've been driving around aimlessly looking for stuff for a while that I think this is my stop. So I'm gonna pull in like I know what I'm doing and see if we can get some metal. Gotta wear a hard hat. This place, this place is huge, huge warehouse of metal. They got what I came for. It says they do mostly steel, but they can get whatever we need. They do aluminum if you need it. They said they can order us like sheet aluminum if you want to, if we wanted to like fabricate something. And uh, as far as I know, I, haven't, I didn't really find a lot of places that had a lot of metal for, for this type, for like my application. Honestly, this seems to be the only place that kept coming up where you could get chromoly tubing in this size. Uh, anyway, this will probably be our go-to for, uh, for projects in the future. So we got our metal, see that bundle back there? $400 worth of freaking metal, four pipes. I should have my six by six plates arrive today. Um, I'm also having to go to Harbor Freight to just get a cheap tubing bender. And I want a good chop saw, not a good one, a cheap one. And the work on the cage is gonna start tonight. I think I got everything together I'm gonna need for this project. We're about to get to work. I got a lot of work to do. This thing's gotta be done by next week. But here's the lineup. Here's the dream team right here I got helping me. Harbor Freight, 12 ton tubing bender. Harbor Freight, $16 grinder. Then I got this miter saw with uh, a little cutting wheel for that. So I think that's gonna make easy work out of this chromoly tubing, but it's also gonna come in handy for uh, the intercooler work piping that we're gonna be doing next week or you know soon or whatever. And of course the old TIG 200, third one I've owned. This one's been working pretty good. So we're gonna pull both of those seats out and I gotta get this harness bar out that I just put in last winter and uh, I'm not really gonna have any use for that. So if anyone's in the market for a harness bar, definitely hit me up. And so for anyone who's worried about the technical things going on here, the uh, all the specifics, a six point roll bar, like the one we're building, has some criteria according to NHRA. If you're doing a six point roll bar, you have to use either mild steel or chromoly tubing. In either case, it has to be an inch and three quarters uh, OD, outer diameter. Um, if you're running mild steel, it has to be at least 0.118 inches thickness. If you're running chromoly, you can go 0 0.083 thickness. So although chromoly and mild steel weigh the same, you can use thinner chromoly. So it actually is gonna end up weighing less. So that's the route we went. Um, the price difference is not that big to me. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it makes, a little, uh, makes more sense to use chromoly at this time. Um, note, if you're making it a full roll cage that goes up to the A pillars and everything, then you can use a smaller diameter. You don't have to use the one and three quarters. You can use one and five eighths inch tubing, mild steel or chromoly. If you use chromoly, it has to be TIG welded. If you're using mild steel, it can be TIG or MIG welded. Um, another thing, everywhere that it contacts the body has to have a six by six plate like these. You can either bolt them, uh, this is unibody. So this is, this is strictly unibody. So not framed cars, just unibody cars has to have a six by six plate everywhere where the, where the cage or roll bar contacts the car. It can be welded in, in which case you would have one that you weld all the way around all sides, um, or it could be bolted in, in which case you have to have at least three eighths inch bolt, bolts holding it down. Um, I can't remember how many, at least four, I think, four three eighths, but you have to have another plate on the bottom side. So it has to sandwich, has to sandwich the, uh, the sheet metal. Um, if you're gonna use bolts, we're gonna be welding in I got these off Amazon, it's like 30 something bucks. They have to be eighth inch thick or thicker. So eighth inch, six by six, and uh, yeah, anywhere that it contacts the body of the car. So yeah, so those are the specs um, we're gonna be doing with the roll bar. I think the main difference between a roll bar and a cage is a cage is gonna go all the way along the top of the roof, down the A-pillar and then down. Um, and then I think it, would, it should also have like a, a door bar that goes from the B-pillar bar all the way up to the A-pillar bar. Um, the main difference between that and what we're doing the six point roll bar is we're not gonna have the halo going around the windshield. Uh, it's going to be the main hoop that goes over the B pillars. It's gonna be, there's gonna be two bars that go back to the strut tower. So one here and one there. And then we're gonna have a door bar right here. NHRA says you're really only required to have five points of contact. So you could get away with just doing the one driver door bar, but we're gonna go ahead and do one over here too. Cause I got the metal and I got the time and, and it's gonna be more 
safe for the passenger if there's ever a passenger in it, but you know, it's just gonna add some structure to the car too overall. So uh, I think that's the way to go. But this style roll bar, the five point or six point roll bar is good up to 10.00 in the quarter mile. Uh, so we shouldn't have to add any bars to this thing ever. Um, but yeah, if you start running in the nines or faster than a 640 um, in the eighth mile. So I don't know that we'll ever be doing that. It definitely won't be anytime soon. In which case we'll probably just have to add some bars, add the halo and add the front bars. Um, but anyway, that's a long way out there. So this is gonna keep us good for a long time. Uh, we're gonna be totally legal. And I didn't know anything about any of this stuff until just now that I'm having to do this. I just learned about all the piping, the sizes, the material. So this is all experimental. I'm by no means an expert at this. And, and as you know, anyone who's been watching my channel knows I have only been TIG welding for a few minutes now. So uh, we're just gonna dive in and just see how it goes. All right, so I got the seats and the harness bar out all the harnesses. So now what I got to figure out is where am I going to put these six by six plates? Now there's not very many flat surfaces in this car that are fit a six by six plate. This is going to go like right here, like right there. And then I'm going to have to bend it down like that. All right. All right, bet. I do that on both sides. I'm not sure where the rear bar is going to go because same problem here. This is just kind of an odd shape. I don't know. This is going to be hard. I tried to make my first bend and what will soon be the hoop and this shitty pipe bender kinked the hell out of my pipe. Well, I'm sorry, kinked my tube. What I have is tubing. What this is is a pipe bender. And I've just recently learned the difference between pipes and tubes on YouTube and why this machine is not going to do anything but kink stuff. So I did find some strategies to be able to still kind of use it. I really only need to bend the hoop, just like two places. If I could just get like a decent, like nearly 90 degrees right here, it could even be a gradual 90. And then over there and come down to the place, then the back bars and the front bars can all be relatively straight. So if I can figure that machine out and just how to make it work good enough, then I'll be good. Otherwise I'm gonna have to spend like $400 on a quality bender tubing bender that I have to like anchor into the concrete and it's just hold, just for this hoop. So F that, we're gonna find a way to make that work. Also my damn saw that I just unboxed from Harbor Freight, quality Chicago electric. Apparently the spindle lock here that you use to hold the arbor still so you can tighten up the blade on it, that got stuck. So as soon as I put the blade on, it's like it's, it's stuck locked. But if I hit the damn trigger, the motherfucker just powers through the lock. It's just like, there's like chunks of metal coming out of it. So I'm gonna finish the job and then that's getting returned. That's getting returned. Like if I can't get it to work, definitely. And uh, yeah, so pretty much real bad start. Already wasted some tubing, but then I used this piece to kind of practice with like a strategy. Basically found this guy on YouTube, I forget his name, who was using one of these to build tubing for some off-road project and he would just like shift it. He would like put it in, start to bend it a little bit and then move it over an inch and then do it again and again and again. And you get like a gradual bend. Uh, overall, it wasn't too bad. It, it kind of just leaves these uh, this, this little waviness right here. But that's really my only options now. Spend another $400 on a pipe bender, or I'm sorry, a tube bender that I'm gonna use this one time or try to make this damn thing work. Okay, so first update on main hoop. So I'm working with terrible tools. We already know that, we've established that. I'm moving past it. We are moving forward, we're adapting and overcoming. So let me show you what my first bends look like. I got a little bit of a kink starting to happen right there. So that's when I stopped and then I kind of progressively moved the bend further along. And all in all, from like back here, it looks pretty legit. Okay, just ignore that little, ignore that little eyesore right there. That sucks. So now I just need to kind of match what I did on that side over on this side and bend that puppy down there. All right, so things are happening here. I got my main hoop bent and I gotta make a couple more bends because I'm going to be bending this leg of it right here inward a little bit so that I can easily weld all the way around it. It's gotta be welded on all sides. Same thing over here, we're gonna bend that in just a little bit and I've got my plates set up just how they're gonna be. So of course I'm gonna have to bend it down and weld the front of it. 
that little cross member, but that's where they're gonna be sitting. So the pipe is, the tube is gonna come down here and then it's gonna curve in and land on that puppy. So we shouldn't have any trouble welding all the way around it. This thing, this thing is trouble. But I mean, it's getting the job done. You just have to bend a little, move a little, bend a little, move a little. And you can see it started like wanting to kink in a couple places. And haters will say that that's gonna hurt the strength of it. But you know what? I think it's gonna be strong than a mother. So we're gonna keep on plugging away. Got the first plate welded in. Turned out pretty good. I'm not ashamed of those welds. So that one's there. But I ended up having to weld a humongous gap because it just wouldn't go flush. So I'm gonna have to pre-bend them and they're really hard to bend. I don't really have a good vise here. So the one that goes right there, I'm gonna take to the shop. And I'm basically just gonna pre-bend all the ones that I can. And uh, so tomorrow I can just place them in and weld them because I was actually moving pretty quick until I had to start just cramming rod and a humongous gap on that, on that one. So hopefully smooth sailing the rest of the way. Hi, how are you? You're all sweaty. Yeah, it's hot. Oh, that looks good. So it's Friday and just a little update on the cage progress. This has been a tough process. This Making the plates fit in their location properly and then getting the welds done has been very challenging. Um, and now an issue I'm dealing with, I got three plates fully welded in and then the fourth one that I'm working on, Matt used the grinder to clean the paint away and also it had like this uh, insulation. And I think it might have thinned out the material a lot on the actual car because I'm having a problem with my welder burning through it. And I didn't have that trouble on the first three plates on which I used a flapper disc to get rid of the paint. So, I mean, maybe just the floors are just a little bit thinner than the structural parts that I'm actually welding to on the other plates. But uh, anyway, I'm dealing with that. I think I'm gonna bring my wire feed welder home just to put the plates down. I can't use that on the chromoly tubing. It has to be TIG welded, but I can at least use that to get the front plates down because there's so many contaminants um, where they had like this glued down insulation that I can't make a good weld with the TIG welder. I'm, um, and if I try, I'm punching through it. We just need to, something with a lot of filler that we can just stick those down with. So. We're definitely going to be working at, on this thing a couple hours a night until it's done because this is turned into an enormous undertaking. Matt came by and helped me for a little bit earlier. Just prep some of the metal surfaces, which helps a lot. That's some of the more tedious work. Now I just got to weld it all up. I got to get it done by next Friday because we're racing next Friday and we need a six point roll bar. So we got our plates welded in. This one turned out pretty good. I'm also pretty proud of this one over here. Welded up nice. Everything looks great there. Some of them didn't go so well, but uh, you know, they're still good and strong. The rear pieces came along pretty well. So now that I got all of our six by six plates welded into the body, which honestly had to be like some of the nastiest welding I've ever done. All I did was just create a ton of smoke. The floorboard kept lighting on fire, even though I had like cleaned up like six inches around where the weld was on the bottom, whatever the hell's coating all over this car was lighting on fire. And so like every 10 minutes I'd have to stop and like blow the smoke out of the garage because it was just crazy. But I got all my six point plates welded in. And so now we're gonna begin uh, tubing. I just got the main hoop tacked in. I've spot welded, spot welded the main hoop in. And uh, it fits pretty damn good. I, mean, I can't really get the whole thing in the frame here but it goes up and around and there's an equal gap on both sides so um so we'll get the back bars in and then i decided it's gonna be really hard to weld our front bars with this limited space here so they're also i'm gonna have to tack in all the extra bars and then i'll bust loose the tack welds on the to the car and so i can kind of move the cage up. i'll be able to move the cage the whole cage forward i mean probably a more than enough distance so that I'll be able to make all the welds on our joints, weld our crossbar and get all of that done and then weld the whole cage into the car at once. All right, so tonight I got the rear support bars tacked up. So on the door bars, my strategy here, cause I kind of was wanting to keep it as straight as possible for the sake of being simple. It's gonna be really close to this chair. And so my plan is we're gonna come off the main hoop right here 
and we're going to come straight across. It's gotta be between the shoulder and the elbow. It's gonna come straight across like this. And then I need to make it kind of like bend in down here to go around the seat and down to our, to our steel plate. Um, there's actually quite a bit of room between the door and the seat, so that won't be a problem. But my strategy for the curved part is I just doubled the length that I thought I would need and I just started putting a gradual bend in it. And so what I'm gonna do once, um, once I get back at it is I'm gonna chop it right in half right there. And so I'll have two bars that are the right length that already have some curve at the base. And then I'll just probably need to put like a medium or like a real light curve around the center on each one. And I'll have one for this side and I'll have one for the driver's side. And uh, so that should be pretty easy. Notching these things was a nightmare. Doing these, not the fish mouths, it was tough. It was tough and I wasted just a little bit of material. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have much more to waste, so we need to get these door bars done right the first time. So that'll be challenging, but I think I got a grasp on it. So I got my um, sidebar, the big one piece that I had bent. I just chopped it right in half and went ahead and bent up the tubing on this side. That scared the shit, that scared the shit out of me. Went ahead and fabbed up the tubing on this side. So I did it with the seat sitting here and you can see we got a little curve in going around the seat and then straight down to our floor plate. And got that nice and clean. We got the fish mouth on this tube, just the best one yet. I mean, it's it's tighter than can be. I mean, we ain't even, we're gonna have a great time welding that. So now I got to duplicate the same thing on that side. This one went really well. I pretty much nailed it on my first try. So uh, getting pretty good at bending this tubing. Uh, before I put in the door bar on that side though, I need to figure out the seat mounting. It needs to be lowered substantially because of Matt's big goofy head. And uh, so I came up with a solution that I think is gonna work that will make the seat still removable and serviceable because we don't want it to just be welded into the car, um, but also gonna lower it enough so that we can run with the T-tops on without the top of Matt's head getting skull capped. And uh, so here's the plan that I got. So on the passenger side, we just kind of welded in these, these braces and just the seat just bolts down rigidly to it. And uh, I mean, that's okay. We don't really ever have passengers unless we're just joyriding. So it wasn't real important over there, but this side I want to be a little more uh, a little more neat about. So what I've done is we're gonna go with something pretty similar in basic operation, but I've cut a couple 45s out of the square tubing so I could get an inch of difference on it. And I've already got the holes drilled. So the seat is gonna bolt up through those holes. And so what we're gonna basically do is this little step is gonna sit on that like that. And I'm going to um, put a, a rib nut right here. And then on the back, what I'm gonna do is I have some larger square tubing that's a little bit bigger than this. And I'm just going to weld like about an inch of it or so back here to the support. Um, and then basically what'll happen is when these are bolted to the seat, it'll come in, they'll slide into the bigger tubing, set down here and we'll have a bolt that goes through to the rib nut uh, so that everything will be nice and sturdy that way. So basically we'll just have two little square receivers here, if you will, that those will slide into and drop down and so the seat is pretty much going to be level with this little brace here, whereas before, uh, with the everything, we were probably about two inches higher than that. Uh, so we are taking about two inches off of that, and then that's also going to enable me to run the door bar here from, you know, it's the hoop down here to that pad. So we'll be able to have clearance there too. All right, got the driver's seat in and mounted. Don't pay too much attention to those welds in the back. I had to use my. Easy Mig 100 for those because my TIG welder did not agree with whatever this black sticky tar crap is. And it, you know, it's having a bad time just a popping fireworks show. So I just threw the old Easy Mig 100 on it. Harbor Freight Special, you can count on that. Um, up here, I ended up going just with through bolts. We were able to use a much larger diameter bolt. So, yeah. So now we got lots of room to route our door bar here. Um, we definitely brought the seat quite a ways down and I'm still not sure if it's going to be low enough for that big goofy tall freak mat but man it's I mean it's got to be two and a half inches lower than it was so we'll see I think it'll be better and uh, let's we'll see how it goes but now I'm about to pull this seat back out and then I'm going to tack in our door bars and try to get the whole cage out of this thing so we can start welding all right so we're taking a break from building roll cage and me and Harry are going freaking racing at Texas Motor Speedway Friday night drags the Z's not quite race ready, so we're just taking the bullet out. 
and uh, just gonna kind of scope the place out. This might be a place we do some racing in the future. But it's pretty cool. It seems like everything's broken up into classes, and everybody's got an opportunity to to win a, a plaque or something, some pat on the back. I don't know what the hell you get, but uh, we're gonna see what it's about. It's it's uh, it's supposed to be an unprepped surface, so on, I'm on street tires in the vet. We're probably just gonna spin like a mother the whole time, but we're gonna try it out. There's a lot of cool cars out here already, so it looks like it's gonna be a pretty bitchin' time. So we're watching the drag racing on the big screen here. It's actually going really quick, but they gotta like run a whole class before we make a pass. It's me and Harry just eating a snack. Track's right behind us. This place is freaking dope. There's so many cars here, so many people. This is like a huge freaking car meet. They got vendors selling food. They got like merchandise booths and stuff. It's actually really cool. And you can see the humongous screen from anywhere in this place and watch the drag racing. So we're just waiting for our class. All right, so we're in line now. Our class finally got called. I almost missed it. My car was just sitting there blocking everybody. But I made it just in time. Looks like we're gonna be racing a Charger Hellcat and he's on drag radials. So it's not looking good. Unless he totally biffs the launch, it's probably gonna be it. But I'm gonna just roll out smooth and try to keep it in the power. Oh boy, this is gonna be tough. This guy's got more tire than me, so he's gonna hook better. He's got more power than me, so even if he doesn't, even if he bogs off the line, he's still gonna pull on past me. I'm gonna try to get a good burnout. They don't let you just do power brake burnouts. You have to do a rolling burnout. So I'm gonna try to hit a one, first and second gear in the rolling burnout. And then I'm gonna try to manual shift it to keep it in first while I'm feathering the throttle so it doesn't just automatically go to second. And this is probably not gonna go good. But damn it, we're gonna try. So I just got knocked out by a freaking Hellcat Charger. Both spun pretty hard, but his tires hooked up a little sooner. Yeah, See how hell those dudes got on. It's actually real cool out here, yeah. man. But anyway, I guess Charger, I should have put up a better fight. Honestly, I was right there with him. I mean, for a street tire, you know, 500 horsepower car against a 700 horsepower Hellcat that's on radials and who knows what else was done to it. I, mean, I think it went pretty well. But anyway, we're knocked out, we're done racing, so now we're just gonna kick it and kind of see what this place is about. Now that we can actually park the car and walk away from it, we're gonna do wander around and see what other kind of cars are here. 